Well, I just want to visit with you a bit about the old days. <laughs> uh, and I don't know how long ago this was, Dad, that you and I talked about what your family, when I made this chart. And, um, but we talked some about when your parents were born and, and uh, kind of how they came to South Dakota and, and some of that. And maybe we could review that. I, I guess as I remember from this chart here, it says that uh, your dad, Manus, was born in 1867. That'd be right? I suppose that was in 1933. Yeah, sure. You ain't got the thing on mine. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, well, he would be... Uh, He was 61 when he died in 28. So that's 28 and 33, that comes pretty close to 1867 now. Yeah. And then uh, your mom was Susan Minning, right? Yeah. Okay. How is that related? How is Susan Minning related to to your side of the thing, Mom? I think she's good with my dad. Yeah. Cousin? Yeah. So your mom and your dad cousins. are cousins, okay. So that would you... Me and that friend are third cousins. Third cousins, okay. Our grandpas were brothers. Oh, and the, you were the only good people around, that's why you... I couldn't find anybody else besides me. <laughs> Pretty nice cousins too. I wouldn't have been so bad. <laughs> Those are third cousins, though. Yeah. yeah. I remember I dated a girl one time, and I told you about it afterwards, Mom, and you said that. Well, don't you know she's your relative? Remember that? I don't remember who was it. I'm not sure I want to say it on tape. No, you can <laughs> no. It off no, that was Kathy Hookstra. Yeah, Ben. Ben Hooks to be Ben Hooks's granddaughter. Yeah. I don't know what her dad. What was my, what were those Hooks? The guy by over by New Holland. Yeah, but uh, Ben Hooks was the end. Uh, I, I can't even think of yeah. it. Well, that's not important. So uh, they got married in. Uh, Well, let's see, if your mom was born in 1880, that means that there was 13 years difference. Yeah, that, that's uh, something mom, I yeah. that was right, like 11 or 13. Yeah. I don't just remember now. You could look that up in the, in the books. Okay. And then they got married, I think, uh, they got married in, when, in, nine, in 97. Yeah. I think it was said here, so that your dad was 30 and your mom was 17. Yeah. Well, that's a good example of Robin the Cradle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And we, I was born in 1908, and I'm uh, 10 years, uh, 10 years younger than that. That will be 88 now, pretty soon. So uh, I guess 1997. That's when they were married. Yeah. It says here that she t she was 17 for one week, mm -hmm. and then she turned 18 after she was married for a week. When was her birthday? Huh? When was her birthday? Your mom and dad were, uh, they, did they live on the farm right that, that you lived on right away after they were married? No. Where no. did they live in their married life? When they first were married, they, as far as I know, I can't recollect <laughs> the way I've been told, you know. Yeah. Uh, on 
the Scottish place down in the uh, north of the dam there in, mm -hmm. in that section. And from there they, they moved what we call the Foss Farm. Uh, that's a mile across from uh, where her folks lived later on. Where Herbert okay. Gertie lived afterwards. Yeah. For you. And they lived there till 1906 when they bought the farm where we have now. It happens to be the uh, eight years this year that uh, that farm that farm has been in, in our family. So they had uh, by 1900. Okay, yeah, and I say by 1906 they already had uh, five kids. Although yes, Jenny May died, or the second Jenny May died. Yeah, and and uh, and Susan was born 1906, right after on the 17th of March, shortly after they moved over. So you were the you were the first kid to be born on the new farm. No, I think Susan. Susan was, was. Yeah. okay. Susan was, and then you. All right. No, I wasn't born until two years later. I was born in ninety eight. Right. Yeah. Talk some about how about how your dad got to South Dakota and and before that, and I don't know. Maybe you want to tie that in some of the mom's folks. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, how his travels were, or, or anything like that. But uh, at one time he was an organ for a while too, out in, in the West. See, he, he was a, a loner. He wasn't no, always with the family. You know. Your dad was. Yeah, yeah. But he came from uh, Arkansas uh, with that wagon somewhere, rather, with the wagon. Well, that's the way they all traveled in them days, occasionally on the train. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I don't know how they happen to come, how they happen to be a meet or anything. But you can better say I don't know than, and then make a mistake. Than I did. Yeah. Now, your your dad was born in uh, the United States, though, wasn't he? No, he was born in Holland. He was born in Holland. Okay. Who? How old was he when he came from Holland? That I don't. I couldn't say either for sure. Were were others of his brothers and sisters born in the United States, or were they all? Was he, a, you know, was he a kid, or did he move here as an adult? I suppose they, they uh, as a young person, the whole family came. Okay, but uh, I don't know if, uh, which, how many of them was born in the old country. Or not. I get the picture that that uh, the bulk of your dad's brothers and sisters and his parents came right out to South Dakota and settled? Or did, and then your dad kind of went around a little more? No, they didn't come out to I, uh, South Dakota and settled. Uh, they came out here and went again and he came back again. Uh, Between here and where? between here and Iowa and Tennessee and uh, Arkansas and, and I don't know where else. Uncle Fred and Aunt Mary, they got married young in order to go along with them to Iowa. I think it was Iowa. Mm -hmm. One time when he wanted to go over Arkansas, however far it was. And, uh, then a year, a year or so, a year or two, whatever, went by, then Grandpa wanted to move on, and Uncle Fritz, they came back. If I have that right now, I, mm -hmm. you see, I'm down in the middle of the family. And Maybe Hatton you know, might know a little bit more about that. Huh? Yeah, if if they remember, you know, they, and some of them, some of them have a different picture. And if I try to make a positive statement. You said your dad was a loner. Yeah, he, uh, see, uh, Argon, he was by himself, you know. And, and he didn't always get along with Grandpa. And that didn't get straightened out for quite a number of years. It takes a long time sometimes. Somebody would say, well, yeah. If they are, if they are, did this uh, replay that 
if I could really make that kind of a statement. Uh, I was only nine, but uh, when Uncle Pete and Aunt Mary brought it out, uh, the day mother died, uh, <laughs> and then this one I'm going to take, but and, uh, Dad come out there and he said, it's too late, she's gone. And Grandpa turned around and went back toward Uncle Pete's old Buick for him. He said, we just want to go back to town. But that got straightened out when he stayed with Uncle Henry. Mm -hmm. My dad hadn't smoked for several years, but the old timers should know that they buried all their troubles with him with a cigar, I guess. Then he smoked a cigar that had been the first one to go nigger doctor in St. Louis. Told me I'd quit smoking or he'd be wearing a white jacket pretty soon. That was an expression for you wouldn't last very long. Yeah. But other, other than that way, I know if there's much more. I guess maybe sometimes it's more, it's more important to know about people and our history and yeah. and some of that. It, it's, it's more important to know things that, you know, personal things about people than it is when they were born and when they died and when they got married and those sort of things. Uh, and so, so you know, we you've used the word loner for your dad and my grandpa. Uh, uh, what other kind of things that do you would you describe his personality like? Yeah. What do you mean grandpa personality? Yeah, yeah, your dad. Uh, soft harder, hard boiled. <laughs> I would say high strong. I think your dad Yeah, that's high strong. I don't know him. I didn't know him that well. Quick in action. <laughs> well, if he, if he was a loner, he probably felt that some too, and yeah. so he probably experienced a fair amount of pressure in his life as a result of that. How are things? How did he fit in with like his uh, other brothers and sisters? As Pedro. far as I know, uh, uh, 100%. You see, now I, I don't know if he ever had any friction with any uh, of you know, his brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. That was wrong. As far as I know, you know, I, I'm halfway down in the family. And, mm -hmm. and those things were. One of one of the things that I can remember is about about your your uncles. Yeah. Um, is I, I can remember when Uncle Henry lived upstairs by Mark and Irene, and, and I, so I can remember that. I suppose they were very old then already. They, they seem that way to be for sure. Uh, well, not so terrible, something like we are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> no, they weren't even, even that old. They probably weren't that old. They were yeah. back in their 60s, I think, when they were about 70 or something like that. They were. And then I, and then I, and I remember uh, uh, Uncle Fred, too. And I always remember him as a, as a white-haired man. Uh, and those, those are the two that I primarily knew, I yeah. think. I don't know that I knew any, any of the other men. Um, yeah, Uncle Lambert and Andy, they, they did back quite a little further, you know. That's his sister. Right. But, you know, I probably, for you, uh, you remember, you were born in 38. Right. And then you've got to have uh, five, six, maybe eight years added on that before you is, is really start uh, registering things in your mind. Right. And so it, it's well understandable that that you don't just remember them so much. Now, let's see, you're You do dad. remember Uncle Joe's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I get one thing I remember about Uncle Joe is this had to be in the forties because we had we were there for a birthday party. I don't know who it was in the summertime, and uh, uh, they had a blackout. And I remember like they, uh, they all the lights and armor had to be shut off. You know, back in those days, in the farm you couldn't. It was all black out in the country. There weren't any yard lights or anything. And then, and the only only spots you could see, you could see a light shining yeah. up over here, and that was of course and another one over here was armor, and yeah. over here was Delmont. And, uh, and I remember that all those lights were shut out. We had all our lights out, even even with the, the gas lanterns. So that had to be before 47 or so in there. But that was at Joe and Jane's over there by Grandview Church. Oh, that is here. That I remember when Joe and Jane lived over there where... North of our place. Yeah, north. I remember That's that. That's south. And, and later on... Maybe north, yeah. You, that should be way in the very bottom of your memory, but then they lived... South of Bill went there for you. Yeah, I don't remember that, but I, but I. Sure, that's where the. Oh, you weren't born there. When, yeah, you yeah, just about when the car burned. Down there. I remember that. See, I didn't. Joe and Jane live on the corner over there by Lyle and Yvonne. Yeah. Where where Mark uh, well, where. Uh, but see, that was. Western Man and John. That was right. That was probably before your time. Just I don't remember that. Oh, you know what you do. That was or they lived there later than they did in the south. No, no, no. South was the last place. No, they lived right? from there to south, and then from the south they moved to Grandview, and from Grandview they moved to Corsica. Right. And I always remember going over there and getting those cookies, those Dutch windmill cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I thought sugar cookies. <laughs> yeah, she made good Big Dutch windmill cookies. cookies. Yeah. I also remember over at Joe's, they had a by Grand View there, they had one of those grinders that yeah, the horses that, walked around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there he had one. And, uh, I think when he was south, then, then he came down our place a lot of times to, to grind his grain for the chickens. See, Sister Marie was uh, with him them years. In the beginning, they lived east of course or west of course first one named Myers Place That's, that, three, that was three miles and then from there they moved to Tina Slack House and while they were on Tina Slack House that's when mother died and, and then they adopted her mm -hmm. and then uh, in a year or so then they moved up on, on Frieda's Place there by Bob and Yvonne mm -hmm. uh, back on now uh, on uh, my impressions of Fred and, and Henry, and you know, as a little kid thinking of them being pretty old, I, I also have some sense of them being pretty wise. Uh, and I, I think uh, they seem very, like, very, both of them seem like solid, gentle people. Uh, I don't know, that may have just been my impression as a kid, I don't know. I think that but, you said solid, didn't you? Yeah. And, I think that's as good as you could say. How, how did how does your dad relate to them in terms of their? You think their personalities were similar, or was he uh, a little more feisty, maybe? Yeah, I think my, uh, no. Uh, part of the temperament, uh, Uncle Fred and, and my dad's was they're pretty much alike. Okay. So, and I've heard, and I, I guess I, I've heard later on too that Fred is also kind of stubborn at times. Yeah. So your dad fit that yeah. too. Yeah. And well, I guess uh, I'll grab repeat it by myself. Mm-hmm. In terms of being a good man. Yeah. Yeah. But he was also stern, but he was more kind, I think. Not, not quite as flighty as high strung as the other two. Yeah. That'd be my No, he, he wasn't high strung at all. I think about myself, and I, a person who doesn't get upset about things, but that doesn't know which way it goes either. <laughs> Kids, uh, 
Where did you live in relation to uh, Henry and to each other? Well, uh, with your cousins and that sort of thing. Especially with them, Good. Okay. Did he live there where Mark lived all yeah. the time? Okay. Well, he lived all there. In, all in my memory. Okay. You know, he always lived there. And uh, I'll go out northeast of our place, about and that was actually. Oh, well, let's see. That gets us about four miles from where we had recently, something like that. And then later on, they moved over this way. Yeah. In the middle of the section there, and that's where they lived till they they quit farming. Yeah. As far as I know, anyhow. You know, all the Joes you've heard, and on the beach they always lived up there by Grandview. In in uh, all our memory. <coughs> <coughs> and not the Lamberts and well, the, the, see the for quite a long time us and Uncle Lamberts and Uncle Pete's Uncle Joe's uh, went to Grandview together and it was almost a week deal that we after church in the afternoon uh, we went all went to Ann Murray's for for coffee after church but Uncle Henry's uncle they went to Ebenezer in the early days, and then after, afterwards they went to Corsican. Where was Ebenezer? Ebenezer was, used to be in Belteski School, there you know what, what okay. you would remember as Belteski Yeah. Okay. That was just on the south side. There. Was Ebenezer a Christian Reformed Church yeah. then already? And then on top of that, uh, talk about family, uh, had 90 lives uh, on the first years they were well, see, I've always thought of them as always being a hen county. I never really knew that. Yeah. <laughs> see, they, yeah, they got married and kept a ha uh, house for us first after uh, mother died. Okay. I don't know just how long. Then they, uh, one winter they stayed uh, by her folks. Uh, when uh, Lloyd, after Lloyd was born, they had to take Lloyd to uh, Chicago to a doctor with his foot. Mm -hmm. Or his feet, I don't know how long. Feet? Right, I remember that. His feet? I don't know, they're not mentioned. Yeah. Then that. Who are braces? Then that and I, and he lived for a while there on the place where Aunt Jane and Uncle Joe lived over there by right Bill Okay. Now then, then they lived by Armour a while. Uh, the case and then, and uh, what he later became Reverend Louis being escorted by their school in place while they were going to high school. And then from there the twenty three or four somewhere in there. Okay, now, your dad's family consisted of your dad, Manus, yeah. and Fred, and Henry, and what were what the other kids? Jane, Hattie, and Mary. And Jane married Joe Hendricks, Hattie married... Lambert Keel. Lambert Keel, and Mary... Mary Keel. Okay, right. Uh, okay, th so then, Lambert Keel, and... Marie, uh, Mary and Pete, and your dad and, and Susan Mox, your dad yeah. and mom, all went to Grandview. Yeah. Okay. And Jane and Joe. And Jane and Joe. Okay. Yeah, they came about 1915. How did it come that they went to different places and, and to you know like to do the different the Christian Reformed and Reformed by who they married or some other choice? I, I can't answer that question because okay. I just don't know whether it was place they lived. You know. Uh, the distance through church made quite a difference in them, basically, yeah. for one thing. Yeah. But I can't answer that, that question, because I don't know. One lady. Okay. Because that was a sister of my mom. And my mom was going to bring you. The debris is dead. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah. I, I 
take to it. Went pretty regular. Well, it is average. Which is a long way. Yeah. 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 But that you're getting into the twenties and then you know the cars. Yeah. Uh, well, even when I was fourteen uh, in there, you know, the church thing. How were things financially as you know, in your you know, between before you got married? I know after you got married though with the depression it was really tough, but how about about when you were kids? Well, uh, times are always pretty good when you're kids. Yeah. Ten or twelve. Really you don't you don't remember that finances were so tough. I'm sure we all have only and it yeah. kinda of seemed like a dreamly poor one, but then either we we didn't have as many class of people then. Another uh, that bread and that, uh, is that and, uh, and we went to him a natural thing, but uh, even on that we had, there's only two two of my sisters I think that were in Germany. And that's that's soups and and, mm -hmm. and they were guys that grew, grew up two miles from the wall yeah. and talked and went. And but uh, you know well, I guess that's true. That mixture started a few years later after school organization. Yeah, that's when I already... I see that now we, uh, I know, I think 50% of our marriages since that time are, are between uh, uh, Germans and Hollanders. Well, you know, I work with, I work with Indian people a lot, as a, so I'm a minority, and I always said, I always felt I had a pretty good experience growing up in a, as a minority, because I, that's the way I felt when I went to school. <laughs> went to school with all those Germans. I got teased about it a little bit, but you know, it wasn't a big deal. But, uh, but you know, nowadays we, we know that. We already realize that we are Hollanders or Germans. Yeah. And, and, and you, you experience it much more than I do yet, yeah. over here and other places like that. Uh, most most people don't appreciate what it means to me what it means to be Dutch. It has a lot more greater impact on me than what what people outside me think. That had a lot of influence about how I think they, they still call it that once in a while, the, the Dutch Reform Church, you know, but that isn't the case anymore. That's right, yeah. We've started mixing it and growing so fast that we're only the Reformed Church in America now. Christian Reformers the same thing. We have so many mixed people that we're not Dutch anymore. Yeah. Well, probably okay. Uh, I look at this chart and I see that your dad and mom got married in, in 1897 when your dad was 70 and your or excuse me, 30. And your mom was just a week away from being 18. Then in uh, 98, Hat was born. In 1900, uh, Jenny May was born. And then in 91, Jenny May uh, was, another, it would be another Jenny May was born yeah, and that's died. between that and him. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, Ann was born in 1904, Susan in 1906, you were born in 1908, and then Alice in 1910. And Lena in 1912, and Henry, Uncle Hank, in uh, 1914, and then Marie in 1917. And that's also when your mom died. Yeah. In, in childbirth, right? Yeah, month. No, no. Uh, well, now they called it something else, but then it was uh, infection or blood poisoning after childbirth. Okay. About a month. I got just a month after this one. And she was 37 years old then? Yeah. Next to 38. Yeah. And, uh, and so at that time, your dad was 50. Yeah. Which is just two years older than I am. And he had uh, the hat, who was 19, and all the way on, and you know, Henry, just three, well, all over the ages. Yeah. When your mom died, your dad was 50, Hat was 19, Jen 16, Ann 13, Susan 11, you were 9, Alice 7, Mina 5, and Henry 3. And of course, Marie just one month. That's just overwhelming to think about that. Where did you get that 
Yeah, this. I, Dad and I worked this out a couple years ago. Uh, in that respect, uh, that, uh, that happened to other people too in, in that days, but that would be, yeah, really would fall on everybody's uh, sympathy now.
with the older girls, assuming a lot of the responsibility of housekeeping and meal fixing, and, and then actually some of them living there with their husbands for a short time. At least Hat did. Yeah, Hat, Hat was that. None of the rest. None of the rest, okay. Um, but now, uh, there was a, a time, sometime or other, I remember just how the, uh, Allison Guy was uh, with us after that was gone. Okay. I don't remember just how that was, but, or just when. Now, now you were 20, and, and then there were uh, two, four other kids. Oh, just three. Hank okay, yeah, Lena. right. Yeah. Hank and Lena and Alice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you four were together. Yeah. And then, and then you said, who came and stayed there for a while? Well, later on, I uh, see uh, uh, Lena got married that, that first winter, sometime or other. Okay. And she, well, that would be from August to February, I guess. She got married pretty young then, I, 17? I kind of, no, I think she was 18. Okay. Think. She, that would be 29. Yeah, that would be, yeah. Right in the neighborhood, anyhow. But, but uh, and I don't know, I, Just when Alice and Guy get married, that doesn't come to my mind. But they stayed there too for a while. Guy was working for Montgomery. And I helped out and worked for Montgomery for the time too. But I think that was my business. Twenty-nine or thirty or even later than that. I don't know. Thirty-one we get married. Yeah. Well, my notes here say that uh Lena got married when she was in, in 1930. And, uh, oh, so, so the three, you and Hank and Lena and Alice lived together yeah. on the farm. And then, and then Alice's husband came there and stayed there. Uh, sometime maybe. Sometime there. there. And Lena was gone at that time. Yeah, around. okay. Uh, who was in charge? supposed to be. What do you mean supposed to be? <laughs> Who said? Well, that's... Uh, <laughs> Did your dad say that? Yeah. Okay. See, uh, his survivors were... Uh, uh, was, he wanted a place for them to, to live. To. And uh, from there on, I just don't know exactly how. I was responsible for entering on the door for guardians. And until then I got married, we got married, and let's see, then until, I don't know, 35 or 6, uh, then, then I began renting the place. Hank worked for Jenny May, then her husband had died, you know. And then... Uh, Did he live over there when he worked then? Yeah, he, she had died, and Jenny May was left with, with her two kids. Mm -hmm. And Hank worked there for two years, and then he got married. But then I, I don't know, 35 or 6, somewhere in there, then I, I first uh, took out a resettlement. Well, the the few uh, the cows machinery, the few horses. Well, we had them days, and I think in forty or forty one we bought we bought the farm. Now, your dad had left some kind of a living will in a yeah. way, had that. Yeah. Talk, I, 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 we've talked about that before. I like to even talk about that now, just because uh, I think that was pretty unique. Tell us, tell me about that. Well, uh, that would be, uh, I haven't looked at it for so long now. I do have a copy of the will in the abstract. It. And, uh, you can see, uh, see before his uh, can 
cancer operation. Twenty-six. That's what he came home and made that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can imagine. Uh, he knew it wasn't going to be long, and uh, he had a bunch of uh, four kids yet that would be homeless. And they didn't have programs uh, for take care of them. They had to provide apartments, house. There was because in those days, I guess there was government programs that done much good in those days. People were. We took care of our own elderly too, you know. The, yeah. There was no home for any place to put them. And there was more necessity, I suppose, in them days to figure something out. And I suppose that's the way he done it. So, so he left the farm divided equally to all the kids, except yeah, he, that. Yeah, he left that. That that was all to be divided equally, except. Uh, we were to have the use uh, until the last kid. Place to live till they, till they had other places to live. Okay, so so like after your dad died and you were kind of in charge, that there were uh, Joe and who else? Uncle Henry and Uncle Henry were guardians of the kids. Yeah. And I suppose you you had to you kind of worked under their supervision, yeah. I suppose, huh? Yeah. And. Uh, and then that 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 just kind of stayed together until yeah. all the kids were raised. Yeah. And then, then after Hank uh, left home, he was the last one. Then what? Then you rented from your brothers and sisters, I suppose. Yeah. Brother and sisters. Yes. Until you bought the farm. Yeah. Yeah, but Hank stayed with us. Yeah, until thirty-six. Yeah. Yeah. We got married in thirty-one. <coughs> he was there. Well, that all sounds kind of hard, like some hard times. But uh, I'm also aware that uh, was it 1928 that you you had two new cars? No, 29. No, uh, he had two new cars. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah, and that old Pontiac never just kept filming. Every other day. That old Pontiac was new though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that old yellow one that you bought that one time? No, no, oh, that one. That, this was before we were married. <laughs> so it wasn't all poverty bill before then, then was yeah, it? If we drove that, that one 5,600 miles. That cost me seven hundred and fifty dollars. And that was the price of the car and it was for the go seven hundred and fifty dollars. Then we got in twenty nine. In the spring of twenty nine we because of that lemon we figured that was Back to it, then we came out with a six cylinder ship and we bought that. And that lasted off the quarter days and a long time into our marriage. It's the first car we ever had that made 100 tons a month. <laughs> really did, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I guess I, I think it's kind of interesting. I, we, it can get kind of heavy when we talk about everybody dying and all, all yes. this. All you kids being left alone, but. Uh, I don't know, I guess you were in 29, you were 21 years old and and you drove a new car and that, you didn't like that one very well so you got another one. You know, Jason's just about 20 and I, I was, if he could pull off a new car, he would think he was doing awfully well. <laughs> yeah, but didn't just take care of uh, and manage uh, two sisters and a brother at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then besides that according to their future wife. <laughs> 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 well,
we didn't do such fantastic things. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was money cost, costing any money. Yeah. Mom, uh, and here you were, I mean, we've been talking about Dad a lot, and you but were... That was in the living room. Yeah. <laughs> You live My pretty. Side goes the right. <laughs> <laughs> you lived in the uh, community, pretty close. I um, mean, so you knew Dad. All you saw lots of him, I'm sure, right? Yeah, we used to visit. Yeah. Us, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Went to Catechism. And then you know we we uh, uh, took them kids to Catechism pretty regularly. These kids that were right off the way. To one or two days, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, when you lived on the farm most of the time when you were growing up, where Everett and Gertie lived? Yeah. When they, when they, when I was growing up? Yeah. Okay. Did you live your whole life there? No, all, all the years I went to school. 26. Went to school there all eight years. Okay. 27, I guess you moved off. So, and, and the school that you went to, now you went to the school that I went to. Yeah, but mom, you went to the school that was south uh, of Stephen Frederick, and then that way half a mile. Yeah. The Vanderbilt. Yeah. Okay. Vanderbilt School, though. Right. Lots of Vanderbilt over there. Uh, did you have any? You know, your family was together. Your mom, I knew, I knew your mom and dad, and, and they lived, you know, just not so terribly many years ago. Uh, what what did you, you were certainly aware, you know, that dad's mom had died, left all these kids, and then later on, uh, his dad. What kind of ideas did you have about what was going on over at their house? I had no idea. Didn't even phase you, huh? I don't think it bothered me very much. He was going through all that pain, and you didn't even I remember know when Aunt Mary and Uncle Fred died, though. Okay. That, we went to the I think I was going with you then. What, we weren't married yet, were we? I remember going to the funeral. I remember that, being on the yard that you the friends. And that, I, that was kind of a lonely, weird place. And we used to kind of have it at the home first or something. Well, the body yeah. stayed at the home then. Yeah. yeah. so removed from us now. Somebody, somebody had to sit up with the bodies all night. Yeah. And then, them days. Yeah. Well, one thing I always remember that, that I was a nine year old kid and uh, old Bill Clark, he was the undertaker and he came out the morning of the funeral and didn't want to steal that somewhere to do that. I remember, I think we got in with the horse, horse, uh, horse, horse, and then lose it or not. Mm -hmm. No, I think they, they might have a car. But in the eyes, it was just, at that time, it was just, well, you know, by the date, 1917, you know, that, that was kind of, some people had cars, some people did. But anyhow, a car came out there. And he had some work to do that morning. That she didn't want to go out in with her. They, they brought the casket out and yet or, or how it was and that I don't remember. Yeah. Some of the people were there that they came in the foreground, she you know, and was, uh, at lunch there, I suppose, before. But when Clark got his work done, there was men out by the barn. Chicken plate egg and the chicken cooper under the granary and on top of the grain and the granary and on the corn crib and under the feed boxes mm -hmm. in, the, in the horse barn. And, uh, I remember that too. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Bill Clark up in the barn. Uh, the barn was full of horses, of course. Some people came with them. And he, he found a bunch of eggs. He said he didn't have a dinner, so he had a bunch of eggs and said, 
don't remember it was his six or eight or nine. He takes his pocket knife and breaks uh, one end a little bit just for a little air hole, you know, and kind of chops the other end up. Sucks one bit egg down after another raw <laughs> <laughs> That's only six to nine years ago, I, I remember that real well. How long did you guys date? Did very many? No. We never did nothing. 
Did very many? I wouldn't have. I never heard of honeymoon back then. <coughs> well, it didn't, I suppose getting started was just like everybody else. You didn't have a lot of money and a lot of things, but uh, it didn't... Uh, how many women would start with housekeeping like I did? But you were already into the depression when you got right in the house with all the depression that was there. I had to satisfy. I didn't even ask. It was okay. I, just, I remember the first time we went there, the wind was the blowing and the howling around the house. And I, oh, how weird. <laughs> was that any different than what you had, though? Yeah, because there was lots of family around there. I could endure it. Okay. <laughs> but we. The place that you moved in with Dad wasn't that much worse than where you where you were with your folks, was it? Oh, I thought it was. I thought folks had moved home, you know. It was pretty nice. Folks had nice moved. And then we east down here. Yeah, they. Okay, but, but the, you weren't living there, did you? You didn't live there. I lived there, there no. for a while. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Sure, they, they were. I got married there. Okay. They moved down there, I think, 26. You see, it was a baby when they moved. I think in the fall of 26. She was about a year old. Okay. She's. Well, I suppose in a way you married and you married that your your family showed some of the effects of having lost a mother and a dad. And, uh, but everybody wasn't living in new houses then. No, they bought they bought that farm and didn't have a big enough house for the family. Yeah, they had a built house. Yeah. So the house was built before they moved on. Of course, it didn't in those days. It didn't need a bedroom for every member of the family. Right. Sometimes you had two beds in one bedroom. Sometimes you had some people. Some people had two, three, four kids sleeping in one bed too. Yeah. And they say you lay like spoons. You all lay the same way, and then when you have to turn, you all turn the same way. <laughs> That's what Hinkley must have done. <laughs> <laughs> then my grandma had been dead for a number of years. My, before we got married. I wasn't going to buy you a wedding suit, I was going to wear the suit I had. But things didn't always get simple so fast in those days. But finally, my grandma's estate was settled a few weeks before the wedding. I inherited $90 from my grandma. That's where I bought my wedding suit. <coughs> <coughs> wedding suit on me. You didn't spend 90 bucks for a wedding suit, though, did you? I got almost one of the best suits you could buy in them days. It didn't quite cost me 30 dollars. I was going to say, yeah. In <laughs> fact, is the coat still hanging in the garage bar? It is? Yeah. I thought just the best. No, the coat. Well, then you should keep it. I didn't know it was around. Yeah, it should be kept in the garage. Just been hanging there for 24 years. <laughs> so then, uh, it didn't take long and you had some nice old kids starting to come your way. Yeah, and the last uh, one came the same day I just delivered a new John Deere termination. <laughs> Well, I'll bet, the, I'll bet the John Deere made you more money than the kid did. We, we did. We did. <laughs> well, it didn't last as long. I don't have very many pictures of you. It didn't last <laughs> as long, though. Spent all the money on the tractor, huh? Mm -hmm. Or he was more interested in the tractor than he was in the kid. Which one was it? I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the tractor didn't last as long as <laughs> No. That's probably because you worked it so hard. No, I guess in all honesty. Kids usually took the top priority in our life. I thought they did. No, we enjoyed it. Had our drives and our friends and our sorrows and our fun and everything together. We made it. Yeah, pretty good. Have you ever had a lot 
Yeah, you don't, you don't remember many times. We were most of the time about average people. I would think so. You know, I, I guess I can remember, uh, if I want to, if I want to try to think about well, how was we, how were we poor? Uh, I can remember going to Marty Mission and getting clothes. I don't know if that meant we were poor. Well, I didn't think so at that everybody time. Everybody did. Well, well, right. Because we made our clothes. Yeah. Kids and ourselves. I can remember being really proud of some feet sack shirts that you made me. Mm -hmm. We get some wool coats from Marty Mission, and Aunt Ann made wool coats and caps for you guys. And one of the things that I can remember you saying a lot, and it was actually true, is patch upon patch in the whole middle. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that I had some clothes that I went out and worked in the field and did chores with that they were patch upon patch. But now today they wear them with holes and yeah. more holes. Yeah. No Jason. patches though. No, Jason had a hole this big in his yeah. jeans. And it was, uh, some, of the, some of them things were it wasn't because, always because you absolutely couldn't get them. Uh, because over the years we were forced to be conservative. Yeah. You didn't quit them at the minute you got money. Yeah. Now you did. Well, you did. Didn't feel bad. You got the prize for having the oldest car in school. Remember that? No. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, you, you had the prize for having the oldest school in your class or something one time when you just go to high school. Don't remember that. Yeah. 47 was the oldest? <laughs> I don't know. Even. I had a 47 Studebaker. I graduated in, in 56. That was only nine years old. Yeah, and you, you had the oldest car. Was that old? Maybe that was in Springfield. Maybe it was one no, no. you had then? No, it was in course. Then I had a 51. Well, I can remember some kids had a newer car, but I know that. I, Dave Booster had a 41. And then of course Urban Bobike had a Bobike had a fifty two, so he had a Bruce Teske had a fifty. They're a little bit in the early. I don't, I think I remember when I was a junior in high school, I, I think that might have been my first real new suit. With both the top and the bottom match. Tweed. I don't remember even I it was it was matching. I had but I had jackets and pants that were different before that. And of course now we can afford them, but our kids won't wear them. <laughs> yeah, but when you were a little gentleman, you used to wear them hats. Yeah. Yeah, but you like to wear hats. <laughs> yeah, I remember I like to dress. Even though they're funny, you mean you like to wear hats? Just something different. You yeah, would start having them duck tails or what you call them? Call them duck tails if you want to. I call them DAs. Yeah, it was. They're pretty close to the tail. <laughs> When we had, here, when we had our 25th wedding anniversary a couple weeks ago, uh, a couple months ago, and we all put our dress on, I, I of course don't have my suit anymore, but I slicked my hair back and made a VA for the kids so they could see what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they wouldn't wear a cap or anything. Oh, you nag me all the time about wearing a cap. And a bunch of guys you guys eat some white dollar for a cap. <laughs> right. If you just wear them. Like Oh, long We'd wear them until we got in the driveway, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to comb our hair all over. That was the worst part. Yeah. You get yeah. your hair all in shape and you had to put that stupid cap on. So you just kind of <laughs> set it on the top so it wouldn't get very messy. <laughs> I suppose. We, we did it when we went to school. We had to wear long underwear. High shoes and long underwear. You know what that a long legged underwear, where that would go. I guess I also remember that that we, I, the, the uh, soles of the shoes would come loose real easy. Uh, the, the whole sole would come loose from the shoe. And then I remember sometimes we we would sometimes put a, a rubber jar, oh, uh, rubber every day around the shoe. Do you remember that? Yeah, I sure do. But I don't know if that was necessary that we'd have to wear that. We didn't we didn't do that very often, but I think. 
maybe it was until we got the sound or something like that. I, don't know, I remember doing that. I also remember sticking cardboard in the soles because they, when they, because you had a hole in it, and you just did it. <coughs> we warm up. Yeah. Well, see, you mentioned but we still do that. I don't. I don't base. I don't basically believe in not using things uh, until you wear them out. Yeah, yeah. then you got your foot across the wrong way now. The other foot has got a hole in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> well, maybe we got the socks on at the end this morning. Terry says, uh, I got, well, he, in fact, a while back, this was my birthday, they gave me socks. because he, he says he can't believe a man in my position runs around with socks like I do. <laughs> Well, see, but the other end of the poverty, in which everybody basically experienced, certainly some had more than others, but, uh, you know, I can also, you know, you, you can make comments once in a while about us eating steak, but I can also remember we'd have steak stacked up on the tray. Yeah, that, that's one thing yeah. we never left. Yeah. We had our good meat on the farm. Yeah. Good ourselves. Yeah. See, and we, we still... We still operate that way because uh, we always have butter on the table, real butter. We do mm -hmm. not real. We don't have steak very often, but just as many reasons because a lot of times you don't buy it very tender, and then you sit there and chew away and chew away, and you got nothing but a wall of left. You know, yeah. We don't buy steak. Do um. you remember that one time when, uh, I don't know when, uh, whether that was after you was going to college or what, some of you guys uh, talked about who would make the best steaks, and you decided your dad could, because once in a while I had to make the steaks, you know, nobody was home. No, but uh, we did. The other, the other thing you did, I really liked that you and, did was fried and, potatoes. <laughs> and the reason was because uh, when the men fried the steaks, for just like me and you and that, uh, we just fried the steak. <laughs> we had a little potatoes and bread with it. But. Yeah. Well, I remember going to college. You could do that if you were only frying the yeah. steaks. But you fry a whole bunch of steaks, and they won't yeah. be as yeah, good. Yeah, that's why the, that's why you can you do it. You can take it off the stove, put it on your plate, eat it right now. But yeah. you know, if you make a whole bunch of them, you have to do a family. Then the rest of them aren't going to be nice and hot, or they're just too many in a pan and don't work as good. So. Well, I remember going to, you know, when I was going to school, that I would go, I would leave home with uh, several packages of meat usually steak that I could fry in my frying pan downstairs in the basement that I stayed in. Did you ever share it with Dave? Oh, not learning. I don't think so. We each had our own <laughs> one shaded, and he didn't have anything that good. <laughs> but I can remember that being pretty good, too, because yeah, I'd no. fry that steak in that pan and I'd eat it with bread and butter, and that was it. John, would you turn that off? Uh -huh. I want, no, I want the sound off. Okay. Uh, look back at uh, at the spiritual in your life, both of you, in terms of kid as kids in your own families and then you're coming together as a married couple and, and then raising your own kids. Uh, how, how, did, how did the Lord play a part in your life and at different times? How, how did you grow, change, develop? things more differently now than I did when I was younger, I think. 
Well, you begin to understand things more. Yeah. Sometimes when you're in things, when you're, you're born in the church, baptized in the church, a confession of faith, you know, you do those things. Regularly, you don't always understand what it's about. Uh, there was a time in the life of you. Anybody would consider me a pretty good Christian, but and I didn't even realize any different myself. And this was several years after we was we was married that I began to see that, that things was different. And, and you thank the Lord that you didn't take it back there when you thought you were a Christian because you had been brought up in somewhere where they start realizing that the Lord really is always had control of your life but you didn't exactly accept it that way. Mom, when you say that you that, that late that thing really developed later, what well, how when, well, when are you thinking about it? Well I guess I see it a little differently. I mean more serious than what I used to when I was younger. But I still remember church? You know, from, like from the day you were married? Yeah, well, yeah, 
That was I always did from the day I was born, I know that. We never stayed home for any yeah. reason unless we weren't able to go. Well, as we are now, are now yeah. nowadays. I mean, yeah, yeah. We, we don't look for excuses. I stayed home for John today because I wanted to be We with didn't him. risk our lives just to attend church, but yeah. if it was possible, we went. That was our, I guess you might say, our number one priority. We always say we're going to go to church. That's Sunday night. We're not going to go here or there because we're going to church. And I think we tried to stick to that about as close as we could. Yeah. There was times we didn't go, you know, but not because of fun or parties or get-togethers or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we tried not to do this. And I still stick to that, that we don't want to have our Christmases in cafes or Thanksgivings, and you know, one time then when I said it wasn't, it was Thanksgiving. I think that's about two years ago. I said to Arla, you can, you guys have said already go to the cafe on a Sunday. I said, but I've always fought that. I don't, I don't like that. Not that that's terribly wrong, but I just always feel I'd rather not. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go to the Lord's house, and that's where I feel I belong. That isn't going to save me. That isn't right. going to save anybody else either. But I tried to obey the Lord. You know, God's commandments, rather. Right I'm not sure my memory served me correct. Did Did we really read the Bible three times a day when we were growing? When I was growing up. Oh, I don't think we did it three times a day always, did we? But some. I think pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't anymore. Well, we, we, we don't say, read it. We wouldn't say that it's a hundred percent. No, we do. We usually do it once a day. Now that is uh, after dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, but circumstances are different. See, I, I got the impression that, uh, that the Bible was read three times a day. I don't know if it was always read three yeah. times a day, but that's kind of what I bet, what I saw, what I rem can remember. Uh, we still don't study the Bible, study the Bible, like we should. That's what I think. And I, tell, I, I say that to the pastor. I never was a leader or a I can't, I can't lead a lesson on a Bible study. I can't do that. Never did it when I was young. Well, no. no. come on down. Never have steps far away. You want to sit over there? Or you sit walk right across there and stand. Okay. This is just an informal visit. <laughs> well, I, I guess one of the reasons that I was interested in talking about seeing you, how you developed, is I, I think about my own development, too. And, uh, of course, now in the Baptist church, we, we like, like you heard it this morning, sermon, you know, people, we, we are taught to to receive Christ. You know, you just thought, whoever believes on Christ shall be saved, and it's not by anything that you do. Uh, and so that's certainly true. That's what the Bible teaches. Uh, I remember you said it to my mom. You know, I, I have, sometimes I have such doubts. I don't know if I'm saved. Yeah. I don't know, mom. My mom would say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That was, that stuck with me. I thought that yeah. was a, well, a good story. And I suppose even in this day of higher education, you yeah, have the trouble, but you know, uh, Basically, in the earlier days, we were uneducated, and we didn't always, even though we knew, we, did, we didn't accept it. Yet. We believe, uh, know what belief meant, we did. because we knew about the Lord Jesus Christ, we thought that was belief, it was, but it wasn't. Yeah. There's quite a difference between knowledge and belief. Yeah. See, and I, if I look back in my own life, then, then, I, then I have to, I ask myself questions about how that developed in me, how my faith came to be where it is. And, 
you know, I remember the catechism, and I get and I can look back and and see that the things that I learned in your home and in the church were uh, were all solid stuff. Uh, and, then, and I can remember as a you know as a 17 year old making confession of my faith, and I really was committing myself to the Lord. Uh, I can also I, we have pictures of our of us on our honeymoon of me reading the Bible on our honeymoon. Uh, yet it wasn't until I was really 30 years old, I suppose, that I that I really could say what what you said, Brother Beaumont, that it's not because of anything that I do. It's simply because of my faith in what Christ has done, and, and uh, so I look back and I think, well, maybe I maybe I believe that, maybe I trusted it even when I was fourteen, maybe it was when I was seventeen, and I kept, but it kept on getting clearer and clearer to me until when I was like about thirty, maybe a little earlier, that I that I saw that. I could go to church and work on all these things and it really didn't make any difference. That if I was doing them as a part of making myself good enough for God, it wasn't going to be good enough. Because whatever I could do would be the filthy rag. And uh, so I could only trust on Christ for what he had done. Now, you know, and I, since, since I grew up in your home and in that good church that you, that, that you brought me to, and I didn't have that real clear until I was 30. I was really interested in seeing, well, how did you guys get it clear? Yeah. Yeah. It comes gradually, too. Yeah. It comes gradually. And by lear by living, by learning, as you get older. Well, sometimes yeah. it seems to be an ignorance, but uh, in different cases it has some bad knowledge. But in your years of memory, I don't, uh, you hardly remember a time that I was in the, uh, the, in the gover governing position of those churches. Oh, I, you were always where we were growing up. Yeah, and I mean, I, I was always on the, you know how to remember when I was on the consistent. Right, yeah. Uh, by the time you were that big, I, I was uh, big enough to remember things. Right. Because you see, uh, about 1940s, somewhere in there, I think I started being on the consistent. Right. Never was off to a, the years when I couldn't hear the good anymore, except for the years when you had the off in between. Well, we might. I, I got a couple more questions I want to ask. Maybe we ought to kind of take a break for a while. Uh, I don't know if that tape is still taping or not. <laughs> I think so. I don't even know how long we've been here. Um, I didn't remember either. <laughs> Quite a while. I didn't even look. Um, would uh, well, I want to ask two questions. I don't care which one comes first. One is that one is uh, what are you grateful for in terms of what you did and how you did it or whatever and what you what. It, where you say, boy, we did that right. Or or what would you do different? Raising kids or farming or whatever it has to do. We did anything so great. Well, if we can say that we better not give us any honor for any of that, I guess. I don't know. through the Lord has helped us through. I don't know one thing I need to say, but to say we did good stuff. Wow, we really you know, it's, a, it's a mystic when you say I done this because of I tend to my business. I done this at the right time. It's just that the Lord kind of and took care of us all the time. 
seen that. He, he didn't. You better give him the honor, us. Don't beat him. He never paid us uh, rich enough to, to spoil us. And he never kept us poor enough so that we had to go hungry. Or steal, as the Bible says. And we never had any bad kids. We had a few problems. I think the Lord has blessed us wonderfully in giving us healthy, normal children for a lot of things. If I see a horrible stump, it's like on television somewhere. Sickly or uh, mongoloid or whatever, you know, then you really can count your blessings. Well, you know, I'm sure it's it's wisdom that gives and you, it's, it's wisdom in you that gives credit to the Lord. Uh, and then that, John, you turn that down, off. But that's uh, I suppose early earlier in your life when you were going after certain things more energy and all that, you might not have put it in such the same way as you do now. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you do wonder what happened. You, you see, I wonder I, I, what you did all these years, though. Yeah. You do. You really, where has the time went and how have you spent it? Relax, it's not so bad to talk on tape, is it? <laughs> <laughs> 
You think it's going yet? Yeah, I don't know. Let's go look. I don't look. That's <laughs> run out a long time ago. <laughs> Oh, it's still going, it? and uh, it'll just shut it off. I don't know exactly. I haven't uh, 